Welcome to the Mystery Bible. My name is Ken Primus. I am your host. We are continuing our study in the book of Exodus. We are now looking at Exodus chapter 2 from different uh, vantage point. Last podcast, we looked at um, chapter 2 from the vantage point of the Bible. What we're going to do today is focus from two other sources that is available to us that we've been looking through and looking from from the beginning of this podcast. And the uh, other sources that we're looking at is the book of Yasher. We're also looking at the book of Josephus and the legends of the Jews. So we are going to take a couple of... Um, uh, we're going to look at uh, the uh, chapter 2, at least the actually the ending of chapter 1 uh, in Exodus and which will lead us into what in we are going to look at, which is then chapter 2 from the Bible. So in Exodus chapter 1 in the Bible, it tells us that at the end of it, the verses 22, And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall uh, save alive. So this was the decree of um, uh, Pharaoh based on some advice that he had from a couple of men, three of them actually. And that is seen in the legend of the Jews, where these three men uh, come together and uh, give the kids the, the king advice as to how to deal with the uh, this growing population of the Israelite uh, people. And we will also, within the framework of Josephus, we will see what his take on that situation was from a historical point of view. And uh, uh, the book of Yasher, we're going to go back in, because the book of Yasher picks up in 67, where it talks about, um, uh, it's now introducing us to Pharaoh, not Pharaoh, uh, Moses' family, his father, his mother, his uh, sister Miriam, his brother Aaron, and then uh, Moses being born. So we are going to be introduced to that family when we get into the book of Yasher in chapter 67. But right now we are still outside of the family. We're looking at the behavior of the king based on his advice and uh, from the men around him. I want to talk to you guys about this, um, the Egyptians. Now, the Egyptians, they were a people that did a lot of um, powerful things within the dark arts. We know that when Moses comes, and this must have been a normal thing, because those um, magicians and so forth, the counselors to Pharaoh, were also able to cast down their staff, and it became a snake. And um, uh, Moses was able to do the same and, and consume that. And again, what that was in reference to was show them that God was greater than all of their stuff that they had going on. So now I want to talk to you about this, the Egyptians. There is, uh, we know that Ham is the father of the Egyptians. And Ham was given a book by his uh, um, was given, he actually, he didn't give a book, he, he stole a book from, um, from, uh, a couple of items from, from Moses, not Moses, I apologize, from Noah, if you will. And one of the things that he took was the, uh, covering the jacket that, uh, was given to, um, Adam when God made that. And that's the one that um, Nimrod uh, took, and he became a mighty man, um, as we, we we saw in the scriptures. Now he took that. Also, what Ham got was uh, he was uh, he had information where we were able to get into this cave where the angels had uh, the fallen uh, uh, angels. Um, the Anunnaki's had written some information on a, on a cave. He puts it into a book, and that book he gave to this book had incantation, incantation spells, and all of those type stuff. And there was a book created that he then passed down to the generations of his people, Ham's people, 
And that's where you began to see no one else on this planet that I knew of as far as uh, documentation with the word of uh, and from um, scripture as well as other outside sources had information to do what the Egyptians were doing at that time. I can't remember reading any more, um, any other uh, um, tribe, if you will, that did those type things. But it was from that book, the information that was in that cave that Ham put into a book, and that book was passed down to the Egyptians. And these men uh, um, practiced these arts, and that's why they were able. So there is one man. Let's go into the book of um, Josephus first, because I want to bring that to you guys' attention. We're going to read in, in the book of um, uh, book two. Actually, we're still in book two. We're in chapter nine of book two in the book of uh, Josephus. And we're going to read a chapter out of there, just some information out of there concerning the Egyptians at, at that time. So let's go and we'll read that. While the affair of the Hebrews were in the condition, there was this occasion offered itself to the Egyptian, which made them more solicitous for the extinction of our nation. One of those sacred scribes who are very uh, sagacious in foretelling uh, future events truly told the king. So now we see that he's a fortune teller, right, is um, talking to the king that about this time there would be a child who will be born to the Israelites who if he were not, if he were reared, would bring the Egyptians' dom uh, dominion low and would rise the Israelites and would raise the Israelites, that he would ex excel all men in virtue and obtain a glory that would be remembered throughout all of the ages, which things was so feared by the king that according to this man's opinion, he commanded that they uh, should cast every male child which was born to the Israelites into the river and destroy it. That besides this, the Egyptian's midwife should watch the labor of the Hebrew women and observe what is born for the venture to save the male child alive. And so we see that um, according to Josephus, Around the time when they were dealing with this midwife situation, uh, there were also this uh, fortune teller that was there talking to the king, Fear at that time, telling him about this uh, prediction that there was a male that was going to be born and this male was going to destroy um, his kingdom and so forth. And so, of course, the king would panic. We know that Herod did the same. We know that um, Nimrod did the same when the fortune tell told him that um, Abraham was going to be born and that his descendants would destroy them. So all of these things, these guys um, were able to see because of a fortune teller coming to them and telling them that this was going to go down. And so now they're going to try and prevent God, I guess, if they can, uh, from making this happen. But as we see through history, that it can't be happening because what does the Bible say? Not one word of God, it does not go unfulfilled. He always fulfills his word. And so the um, fullness of man to try and prevent God from, from uh, obtaining his plans is absolutely crazy because the Bible says that the heart of man is in the hands of God. So that's not going to happen. So now... When we look at uh, the legend of the Jews with this in context, so we can pull out some insight as to what is going on around that time when the Bible just makes this statement that, um, that I read to you earlier, that and Pharaoh charged all his people saying, every son that is born you shall cast into the river and every daughter you shall save alive. So what caused that extreme behavior? So we are getting a glimpse outside of the um, 
the Bible to see because the Bible does not go into that uh, detail as to what caused that extreme behavior. So according to uh, Josephus, there was a, um, a seer that told him that there was someone coming that was going to be born. This one is going to give you some problems. And because he's going to give you some problems, you might as well just take them all out. And so that was the thing. So the king now, uh, if I'm a king, um, I'm, the, I'm the big mahaf, as they say. Uh, he is going to um, get some advice as to how to go about doing what this uh, seer had talked about. So he got himself a couple of counselors. We talked a little about Joe being one of those. And so we're going to get some insights now into this aspect of who Job is and uh, what was his contribution to the advice given to the king about the growth of the people of Israel, the, that they keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. And I keep telling you guys why. It took 400 years for the children of Israel to get to like this number of the sands, you know, Jesus, God had promised Abraham. Abraham that he was going to do that. So it took him 400 years to get that to that place where they are, their number as the sand of the sea. And so nothing that any person, any culture, any kingdom, any nobody can't stop that as, you know, number one time. And the fact that uh, they were procreating and so forth, um, you know, none of that. When also... In the plan, when they had planned and put this plan together, they had also separated, they tried to separate the husbands from the wives. They told them that there was a penalty for them to go home and so forth. But yet in all of that mess that uh, uh, God was still able to get his will complete. So it doesn't matter what is going on in the world. Uh, God's will will always supersede everyone else. So if he says something, it's going to come to pass, regardless of what it looks like or what it don't look like. So we see then that uh, this seer tells the king, hey, guy, someone is coming. Um, this king brings a couple of his boys that are his wise men, if you will. And we see that this is in the legend of the Jews. So we're going to read this um, out of this particular uh, uh, book just to get an answer or some additional information as to why that extreme behavior took place in um, Exodus chapter 1, verses 23 in the Bible. So here we go, and according to the um, legend of the Jews. And this chapter is titled The Three Counselors. In the 100 years, um, it tells us in the 130th, year of Israel's growing, going down to Egypt, Pharaoh dreamed that he was sitting upon his throne, and he lifted up his eyes, and he beheld an old man before him uh, with a balance in his hand. And uh, he saw his taking in the elders, nobles, and the great men of Egypt, trying uh, them together and laying them in one scale of the balance while he put tender kid into the other. The kid bore down the pan in which it laid until it hung lower to the other with the bond Egyptian, the bond of the Egyptian Pharaoh arose early in the morning and he called all together all his servants and his wise men to interpret his dream and the men were greatly afraid on account of his vision. Balaam the son of Borah then spoke and said, This means nothing, that a great evil will spring up against Egypt. For a son will be born unto Israel. So we see now, this is in the legend of the Jews, we see this uh, seer is here. It actually names him, tells us Balaam, the son of Bor, then spake and said. So this seer that we read in the book of um, Josephus, is named in the legends of the Jews. He says, This means nothing but that a great evil will spring up against Egypt, for a son will be born unto Israel, who will destroy the whole of our land and all its inhabitants. And he will bring forth the Israelites from Egypt with a mighty hand. 
Now, therefore, O king, take counsel at this matter, that the hope of Israel be frustrated before this evil arise against Egypt. So here is these guys coming. I, I love I love God. He, he, he's really interesting. I love God. He's, he's beautiful. Um, let me take you to the garden for a second. Here he is. He created the earth. It tells us in the beginning, um, God created the heavens and the earth. So it stops there. And so um, uh, the Hebrew doesn't doesn't have a word, quote unquote, for the universe. So it just tells us the heaven and the earth. And so God then begins to explain from verses 2 all the way down what that looks like, what that creation looked like. And so he began to do all this stuff. So he finished, he created man and all that stuff. And then he puts this man in his garden and he puts a couple of trees in that garden. The Bible tells us that the tree of life is in that garden. The tree of uh, uh, good knowledge of good and evil is in that garden. There's a bunch of other stuff that is in that garden uh, freely for man to go ahead and take whatever. Now that tree of life had a fruit because um, Enoch talks about that fruit and all the different stuff that is there in that, in, that, in the book of Enoch. But anyway, these trees are there. And so it tells us that God used to come down and talk to his creation. And then one day God comes down and he's talking to his boy, Adam. You know, he's like, yo, bro. He says, all the trees in this place is all you, man. You can, you can, you can you have at it. But he says, but this one over here, man. Let me let me give you some insight about that one. He said, "This one right here, you know, I would I would stay away from that because if you touch this, man, let me tell you what'll happen to you, man. And you know, I don't want that to happen to you. So I, let me warn you before you you do anything. So it's up to you. But I mean, there's this other tree over here called the tree of life, and." Um, God wanted him to walk on to that tree of life. He never told him not to touch that, did he? And so the fact that he never told him not to touch it meant that he wanted him to touch it, right? So, but he sat down, took the time, came to this man, explained to him about this one tree. And he says, look, bro, this is not a good one. You know, everything else, go ahead. But the man, you know how us men are, you know, we're a little... Uh, hard-headed. The woman comes in. She was deceived, but the man was not deceived. The man willfully chose to eat it. She was deceived. He was not. And that's what happened. It was a choice that he was not deceived. He willfully was disobedient. He became rebellious against God. God warned him. So now here we have this Pharaoh God comes and God is going to do the very same thing to this brother. And he's like, look, bro, let me show you in a dream what is about to go down. And the Pharaoh is a little panicked. You know, he got a little upset. And he's like, call his boys. And he's like, yo, man, let me tell you what happened. And one of his boys got up and says, look, I know what that is all about. He said, this is a dude coming, man. This dude is coming and he's going to wipe us all out. And so the king says, oh, wow, we got to come up with something, you know, because we're going to, you know, this guy's going to wipe us out. But God was showing him an event that was going to come and take place, regardless of what craziness he does. But watch the craziness that they do. So the king said unto Balaam, what shall we do unto Israel? What have try we have tried several devices against these people bro but we cannot prevail against them now let me hear your opinion so he's saying man we're trying our best we've done all kinds of stuff these people just keep multiplying man we can't we can't we can't stop this what's going on so now if you can't stop that what are you doing you know you but of course, man is a little crazy. He's a little, you know, you know, got to do his thing. So here comes what Balaam says. At Balaam's instant, the king sent for two counselors, Raoul, the Midianite, and Job, the Uzite, to hear their advice. Raoul spoke, spoke first. He says, if it seems good to the king, 
Let him desist from the Hebrew, and let him not stretch forth his hand against them. For the Lord choose them in this day of old. So God chose these people. He's reciting, he says, God chose the Lord, for the Lord chose them in days of old. So God picked these people, bro, and took them as the lot of his inheritance from amongst all the nations of the earth. So this brother is spitting some truth, if you will. And who is there that has dared stretch forth his hand against them with impunity, but that their God avenged the evil done unto them? And so this brother is speaking truth to power. And let's see the response to truth to power, because everything he said so far is true. And it is the fact from God's point of view, meaning the truth. And I keep telling people there's a difference between truth and facts. But this truth is absolutely the truth. And the fact is, whatever we do is not going to stop from the truth coming to fruition. The truth shall set you free. So let's see what this brother said. So Raul then proceed to, um, to talk about some of the mighty things that God has done on behalf of these people. So he says that God performed for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he closed his admonition with the words, Truly, thy grandfather, the Pharaoh of former days, raised Joseph, the son of Jacob, above all the princes of Egypt, because he discerned his wisdom, for though his wisdom, through his wisdom, he rescued all, all the inhabitants of the land from the foreign famine. And after which he invited Jacob and his sons to come down to Egypt, that the land of Egypt and the land of Goshen be delivered from the famine through their virtue. Now, therefore, if it seems good in your eyes, leave off from destroying the children of Israel. And if it be not that thy will that they dwell in Egypt, send them forth from here that they may go to the land of Canaan, the land wherein their ancestors sojourn. Send them out, brother. Let them go. So before Moses showed up, there was a brother that preached to this man and told him, let him go. And that man uh, spoke truth to power, as is demanded by men of God, uh, men that represent God, true men of God, will stand against um, and speak truth to power. That's how they are, because we know that the prophet did that to A um, David and told him, uh, you know, that uh, you're going to be judged because you, you did something against the, uh, a man. You killed, his, killed the, the, the husband, took his wife, and all that kind of stuff. And he came and spoke, made him spoke truth to power. Here is this brother speaking truth to power. And he said to them, let them go. So now we see that the dream came as a warning to this king. That some stuff is coming your way, bro, and you have to make some decisions. We see then that God gave him the dream, and then we see God gave him the answer to the dream by providing someone to give him the insight to let him understand that um, this is coming. Just let them go. Pharaoh rebelled. So I want to tell you guys something the Bible tells us, and I've been saying to you, the will of God will always, will always supersede man's. So God gave this man the insight to tell uh, Pharaoh, but Pharaoh's heart uh, was hardened. And we see the force at the beginning of the hardened heart of this man, Pharaoh, with some insight. Because the Bible says by the time Moses shows up, his heart is fired up. But the Bible tells us that 
in the heart of the king is in the hand of our God, and God is able to move it back and forth to accomplish his gift, his will. We can't stop what God has said. So now we see that he said, let these people get out of here, let them go back to Canaan. Um, we know that that's what Moses came to get them out of there anyway. And there is the advice given and the advice now of uh, Pharaoh. Let's see what, um, uh, let's see what uh, advice that uh, is now given by um, uh, Job and see his take on the situation again because we are looking at these two these counselor the first counselor that came was the seer the second counselor was this gentleman that told him the truth and what he ought to do now let's see what the third um, counselor says and so when Pharaoh heard the word of uh, Jethro Raoul, he was exceedingly wroth with him and he was dismissed in disgrace from before the king, and he went to Midian. And that was Pharaoh's salvation right there. And he kicked him out. The king then spoke to Job and said, What sayest thou, Job? And what is thy advice uh, respect, respecting the Hebrews? Job replied, Behold, all the inhabitants of the land are in thy power. Let the king do as seem good in his eyes. Balaam was the last to speak and behest of the king, and he said, From all that the king may devise against the Hebrews, they will be delivered. If thou thinkest to diminish them by the fling fire, thou wilt not prevail over them. For their God delivered Abraham their father from the furnace in which the, Ch the Chaldeans cast him in. Perhaps thou thinkest to destroy them with a sword, but their father Isaac was delivered from being slaughtered by the sword. And if thou thinkest to re reduce them through hard uh, and rigorous labor, thou wilt also not prevail. For their father Jacob served Laban all manner of hard work, and yet he prospered. If it please the king, let him order all the male children that shall be born in Israel from this day forward to be thrown into the water. Thereby cast thou wipe out their name, for neither any of them nor any of their father was tried in this way. So he came up with a new way. Now the slaughter begins. Balaam's advice was accepted by Pharaoh and the Egyptians. They knew that God paid much measure for measure. Therefore, they believed that the drowning of the men children would be the safest means of exterminating the Hebrews without incurring hard harm themselves. For the Lord has sworn unto Noah never again to destroy the world by water. Thus they assumed that they would ex exempt from punishment wherewith they were wrong. However, in the first place, through the Lord, had sworn not to bring a flood upon men. There was nothing in the way of bringing men into a flood. Furthermore, the oath of God applied to the whole of mankind, not to a single nation. The end of the Egyptian was that they met their death in the bellows of the Red Sea, measure for measure, as they had drowned the men of children of Israel. So they were drowned. That is some powerful stuff. And remember, I keep telling you guys, judge not according to how you will judge. God judges you and me according to how we judge people. And so he measures out exactly. If you guys are cruel to people, God is watching you. I keep telling you guys, no, nobody's getting away with nothing. Not on this planet. And so God is watching you and I, and how we judge, he will judge back measure for measure. And they understood it then, and many of us don't understand it now. If you look into the New Testament, you will see it measure for measure. God will judge you according to how you judge others. And so this is God's way of recompense, if you will, so that you and I can feel exactly how the others feel. 
And um, we're looking at the political arena in America, and we're seeing measure for measure. Uh, God does not like liars and people um, oppressing the poor and doing all these things to the poor. And we know that uh, there's one party that has been trying to advance um, the poor through education, through providing health care, through doing all of these things to try and advance them, uh, bringing in um, all these different ways to help and assist the poor. And it is a principle of God. God said, if you take care of them, I'll take care of you. And then there's another aspect. There's another group of people that decided that they want to oppress the poor. They want to oppress the poor. They want to take away all of the things that the other side is trying to do to lift them up. And because of their oppression to the poor, that God said he will judge them accordingly. And we're watching them being judged. And as they've been changing to a fascist belief system and no longer, uh, because that's what it ends up to be, you will be <laughs> exactly what that is. And that system always oppresses the poor. And that's what we're looking in the state of America right now. We see a two systems that are trying to survive. One where it is being addressing the need of the poor and then the other that is suppressing the poor. And the people of the nation will make the choice as to which is which. But I want to educate a lot of those people that are in the party of ignorance. I call it the party of ignorance because they don't understand the Constitution and they don't understand the Bill of Rights. If they would look at the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, they will understand that the behavior of the men and women within that space, uh, the things they say, are all against the Constitution and are all against the Bill of Rights. And it's just because they choose to be ignorant and not educate themselves, they will always be deceived. And so it is their choice as to whatever they want to do. But we see here measure for measure. God will always come to you how you come to people. And so be very careful of how you treat people because God will treat you the same way. And so um, get yourself together, guys. Uh, we see now that these men will implement all kinds of madness in order to provide and come against God. And God is never a loser. God never loses. Um, he doesn't know anything about it. And so we serve a God that is always a winner. So it's up to you and I if you want to continue winning or you want to be a part of the loser. The Bible says that it is our choice. And so I want to thank all of you guys that follow me at um on you know whether it's on this podcast here at the or are you following me on facebook and those that are listening on, on facebook or even youtube uh like and subscribe so that we can grow the channel and continue to learn uh, about god and what he has done for us as we study the stuff behind the scenes to get a better picture as to what happened in the bible i want to thank you so much I want to invite you guys to come and learn so that we could become effective and change this world.